All right, so I got all these thoughts in my head and sometimes that happens. This is not going to be a hiking video. This is going to be a Kirk talking to you about things. Now, this is the nice uh, Santos. They put this up. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, that's pretty cool. A lot of money, though. I mean, I kind of rather see it going into the trails, but it does kind of introduce the uh, the atmosphere of, you know, here you are, you're coming into the trail. And uh, let me just tell you what I'm going to talk about uh, on this video so that you can cut it off right away if these are not things of, of interest to you. Uh, a little bit about uh, my philosophy on investing. Um, you know, I'm not uh, uh, successful. And of course, this is not, not advice, I guess I should say. This is just my opinion. And uh, you can't take financial advice from me. I think I'm supposed to say that on these videos. Um, but, uh, you know, you might uh, think about things the way that I do or just kind of say, hey, you know, maybe he's got a point, maybe he doesn't. Uh, the other thing was I wanted to give you a lot of tips or, or actually, I guess, the uh, pitfalls of trying to start a small business and all of the things that, that I ran into um, so that hopefully if you are considering doing that or even writing a book, uh, you know, these are, these are things you're going to have to think about. I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, the, the deck of cards is stacked against you in a hundred ways and, uh, you know, maybe knowing these things will, will help you out. So let's get on to the uh, investing first and and kind of kind of my thinking. All right, so uh, you know we've got we've got Biden probably coming in, uh, you know, and he's uh, uh, well, you know, I I feel sorry for Trump. You know, he's like, where is the FBI? Truly, where is the FBI? You know, <laughs> I mean, I haven't, you'd think they would you'd at least see one of them out there investigating something, but uh, you know what they there's a lot. Of, Trump made a lot of powerful enemies, and they want him. <laughs> they want him gone. So I don't think he's gonna gonna be able to get any help from uh, the swamp, as we like to, everybody likes to call it. Uh, and Biden's a swamp creature, you know. He's pretty. Uh, sorry, I know if you're a Biden fan, you know whatever. He's he's got a lot of ghosts in his closet. A lot of you know the whole Biden. I mean, whole uh, uh, Hunter Biden. Uh, uh, corrupt thing with the about laptop and all that stuff. Who knows? No, don't want to get political here. But. Uh, so getting back to uh, investing, so, you know, what do you want to do? Well, what did I do here recently? I bought, you know, I talked about it, the Honda ADV 150. Okay, now I want you to remember back when gasoline hit uh, four, $4 a gallon, okay? I was just so lucky at that time, I won't give you the whole story, but I happened to have just lucked into a Geo Metro before that whole, you know, fiasco took place where the gas prices just skyrocketed. Okay, and I, I got that car for, I don't remember, 2000 Well, I turned it around in six months and sold it for 4000 And that's because the gas prices have gone up. And see, the same thing's going to happen. You know, if Biden, okay, what's the political atmosphere here? If Biden does get in and he holds true to, to stopping the fracking and the offshore drilling and all of those things, uh, what's going to happen to gas prices? Well, they should, you know, you would think, go up, okay? And then there's another, you know, aspect to that story that you got to kind of look at and think about is, okay, we'll no longer be energy independent in that regard uh, as far as uh, fossil fuels go because uh, that will crush the uh, a lot of the uh, small oil companies and drillers and whatnot. <clears throat> so uh, we're going to have to import our oil. Where, where, what do you, what's a good place to look on that? And that is the tankers. Okay, the tankers, they, they've, there's only a few left, okay? There was a big consolidation in that industry that you probably didn't follow, but I own I own some tanker stocks, and uh, and I actually, I can't say I've done well. They pay pretty good dividends. And, uh, you know, the two that I own are Nordic American Tanker and DHT. And, uh, boy, I couldn't even tell you the name of DHT. I haven't looked at it in a while. Uh, Nordic, man, it went all the way up to $9. I bought it around buck fifty two dollars uh, so uh, I took some profits but I didn't take enough and then I bought more on the way down so I'm, I'm, I'm about average or you know I uh, haven't really made anything uh, other than the dividends they've been paying their dividends and it's a well-managed company if you look at it uh, you know DHT but what they did was they made a lot of money this year storing the oil because you know because of the virus we had a, an abundance of oil and they were looking for places to store it so they put it in the tankers and man the tankers were we're making out like bandits. Now, I haven't really looked at it, but I just think there's a bright future for that industry because if we do start importing our oil again, 
um, those uh, those companies should do well. And you, there's uh, there's about three or four of them you might want to look at that have pretty good balance sheets. There's a guy, uh, David Poignac, I think he's up on YouTube, and uh, he's got a, a couple of videos on the tanker stocks. And he really, I, I tell you, I like that guy. He breaks down uh, his philosophy on why he makes the moves that he makes. You know, he's not giving you advice. He's just telling you this is a, this is the latest thing that he looked at. So uh, you know, when, so when you're buying, when you're investing, or buying vehicles, or making big purchases, you know the old adage, you know, go where everybody else is not, right? So you know, I, I'm looking around, I'm seeing everybody buying these huge, big trucks, and uh, God, I mean, I'm just, I'm just hiking that road back there. That's a portion of the Florida Trail that I will never ever do again. But I wanted, you know, like I said, the goal is that we're going to hike all of the Florida Trail and do all 1,000 miles. But uh, so, yeah, anyway, get, getting back to that. So go where the other people don't go. So what do you think if gas prices really do shoot up, let's say three, four, uh, four dollars a gallon, uh, how much do you think? I mean, did, are you going to be able to get a Honda ADV 150 getting 100 miles to the gallon? Oh, heck no. You know, it's going to be really difficult. Same with the, uh, um, the hybrid cars. I'm looking here. I guess I'm just going to stay on the bike trail. I was trying to find the Florida path. You know, we've got foot trails, bike trails. Now you can you can hike the bike trails, but if there's anybody out here, it is getting dark. They're going to run right over. <laughs> but I, I'll just stay on the bike trail. I don't think it's getting pretty late. I, I'm probably going to be hiking in the dark and doing my ooh, 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 uh, rendition again because I'll be. And this time I don't. Well, I do have a flashlight on the phone. Okay, so uh, getting back, so now is a really good time if you're kind of uh, not into the muscle cars or you don't need a big pickup truck or, you know, an, or an RV or whatever. It'd be a good time to get some fuel efficient vehicles because there's, there's not a huge premium on those right now. And you know what, you can get into some of the bigger vehicles like the, uh, I'm looking at the Subaru Outback and the Forester. You know, boy, they're getting 30 miles to the gallon. Those are big SUVs and with the... Uh, you know the all-wheel drive technology I forget what they call it and uh, you know and they can you can go off-road with those vehicles pretty good uh, and so they're a real good compromise that's what I want to get now how I'm gonna talk my wife into that I don't know because uh, I'm trying to get rid of our old cars because imagine okay here's another thing that I think we're gonna come to a head I do believe we're heading for an economic crisis there's just too many people unemployed well I'm trying to hike underneath here uh, too many people unemployed, too many things happen, too many blows to the economy, too many state governments heavily in debt, too many cities that are going to go bankrupt. It's just, uh, it's just a, pardon my friend, it's a stuff storm. storm. Put, you put the word in there. It's a stuff storm that's going to happen eventually. And uh, I can't predict when, nobody knows when. But, you know, I would say right now you got to kind of prepare for that. So what do you want to do? You don't want an old car because who's, you know, when you when you're in the middle of an economic uh, calamity, like we had in 2008, you know people aren't going to be able to buy cars. So it's a good time to get rid of those old clunkers, you know, that you've been driving around and paying. Like this year, I I bet I spent four thousand dollars fixing our two vehicles, and that's why I bought that motorcycle, so that I can get rid of the uh, one of the cars, and uh, I'll just you know we'll be a one car family. And I know my wife says that ain't going to work. I got to have my car. I said, well, you can have it, you know. I got my motorcycle and uh, I can stay home a day while you go do your thing. But uh, anyway, but, but get rid of the older cars, get the new ones now while, while the getting is good. Uh, so there's that. Uh, investing, you know, you go where the other people aren't. Um, the tanker stocks, I think, is a good place. I got really nothing else going. I totally missed the boat on Tesla and uh, the, the big corporations. You know, I didn't know that the government was going to be in cahoots with them. And just bury the small businesses and drive everybody to the the corporations for everything. I mean, you know, there's, you you know, you you, you can you can't go to the local little shop and you know pick up groceries anymore. The only place you can go is Walmart. You know, they they stayed open and they shut down all the little grocery things. You know, Dollar General stayed open. Hey, there's another stock I'm going to look at. I swear I see a Dollar General on every corner, and uh, man, they've just been growing like gangbusters but I haven't done an analysis on the stock so I'm I'm just throwing that out there because that's another thing when you're when you're an investor I think this is the Florida Trail I'm gonna hop over here and get on the this is the footpath 
that's the bike. Yeah, because yeah, actually I've hiked this before. So that's the bike trail. I, I, <laughs> so now we're back on the Florida Trail. That's cool. All right. So uh, uh, that's, you know, Dollar General might be something to look at. You know, if you, but that's, that's what you do is you kind of roam around and, and if you see something and you think, wow, you know, that's, that stuff is selling really good. Maybe I should look at who's selling that and, you know, is there a way I can get in on that investment? So, uh, and, and trust, here's another thing, trust in yourself. Don't trust in others, you know. Most of these uh, financial analysts out there, they're not, uh, you know, fee-based. Fee they're they're commission-based, and they're not, they don't hold your best interest at heart. They want to, you know, they, you, you throw your money in their hands, and they're going to make a ton. Now, hopefully, you know, some of them may make you money also, but I, I doubt it. I trust in myself, uh, and I've certainly made a lot of mistakes over the years uh, investing. So that's enough on investing. Let's get back to the small business pitfalls and stuff. So, okay, so now you, you've come up with an idea. I came up, my idea was to start a cybersecurity business for small, uh, small business and home computer users. Well, I didn't have a ton of money. I didn't go out and do my market research. So that's kind of like the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is market research. And how do you do that? Well, I guess what I could have done was gone to the local American Legion or the VFW and you were going around and just, you know, walked into small businesses and say, hey, what's your, your interest level in, in cybersecurity? Uh, you know, you know, you could try, I mean, I tried to go to like to the Chamber of Commerce, but they want, everybody wants your money, by the way. When you're trying to start a small business, they think you've inherited some money or uh, you, you've got money and uh, you, they're going to, they, they want, everybody wants to rape and pillage you for money just, just 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 that's a given i don't care where you go whether it's small business administration because they they, they want to give you loans and charge you tons of money and good luck getting those loans in today's atmosphere uh you know if or if you go to score which is one organization those idiots in there some of them guys oh we'll, we'll put up a website for you you know and i'll get into that there's a lot of pitfalls with having somebody else do your website uh so it's just just let's just continue on uh, and then of course all the legal entanglements you get in Oh my goodness, like I said, this is just a, you know, Kirk talking video, you can cut it off at any point. All right, so I here I am, I'm gonna start this thing. So I didn't do my marketing research. It turns out there is very little interest in uh, small business or um, uh, personal cybersecurity. There really isn't. I mean, there's a few people out there, you know, but uh, by and large, you know, when I, when I would go to small businesses, I mean, I'll just, I'll give you one example. So I met this guy at the Legion. I was real happy. I just, my books had just rolled off the printing press. And I walked in there and, I, you know, talking to this guy. I said, hey, everybody, here's my book. You know, I'm going to announce it. I, you know, you think they're, they're your friends. No, they're just your acquaintances. They don't give a crap. So he wrote a damn book. You know, they don't know what, what's involved in publishing, writing and publishing a book and all the things that I went through five years of my life I gave to that project. So anyway, and uh, so I met this guy. He says, yeah, I got a small business. He says, and you're right, man. You're right to be writing about that. I said, yeah, cool. I said, uh, he says, yeah, my, my business. He says, I make widgets and uh, we got hacked. And, uh, you know, they stole $500,000 from me. I said, I'm thinking, my God. <laughs> that's, uh, that's almost my whole retirement right there, you know. 500000 I said, damn, man. I said, well, you need a copy of my book. He says, he says, he picked it up and he says, oh my God. He says, look at the size of that thing. That's 980 pages. I said, well, yeah, but you, you just read the sections that are relevant to you. I said, the book's only $80 because, you know, I had to make, you know, some sort of profit on the book. I'm not going to give it to him. And uh, he says, he says, no, nah, man. He says, I got a nephew that works in computers and uh, he, he takes care of that aspect of the business. And I'm thinking in my mind, well, that nephew must not have done it. <laughs> very good job if you just lost five hundred thousand dollars but i mean it's just it, it, you just you just want to beat your head into the counter to sit and knock yourself senseless you know you're like well you know jesus you don't even want to buy a copy of the book or look at it and you lost five hundred thousand and you're going to trust your nephew uh for all of your computer uh, needs for your small business hey there you go so that's just one huge example of, of where that business went and you know what i have not given up on the business. Here's another couple of things that uh, before you even start a small business that you're going to have to know, okay, is, uh, okay, we talked about the market analysis and that's where I really failed. Um, you know, I just thought that, you know, the market would come to me. 
you know, because once uh, once that book was out, oh geez, you know, small businesses everywhere, they can't get any, there's no other book written about it. None. Go go to Amazon, type in small business cybersecurity, you won't find anything. And uh, so, you know, I thought, well, hell, you know, if it does, somebody does a search on that. And so that's why I, I, I named the book what I did, because that's another thing. You know, what are they going to search on? Small business cybersecurity. So my book was called The Internet Has Infected, the Ultimate Cybersecurity Guide for Small Business and Home Computing. Right. So I figured that if they searched on it, they'd find it. Right? So anyway, that uh, this just telling you things you think about. <clears throat> All right, so the market analysis was dead. So then you get into uh, the the editing aspect, and I hired somebody, and uh, I did not know how editing worked, or how you know what what you're supposed to be paying. And I was giving this person a ton of money. I won't even. I mean, I, I'll tell you what. The, the final mark was ten thousand in the end. Okay, and I got absolutely nothing in return, uh, hardly, because they kept stringing me along. They kept saying it was a relative. You know, that's why I didn't pull out. Because I thought, well, you know, I hadn't given this relative uh, money for for uh, her, her college and stuff. I won't go into who it was or anything like that. But And uh, so I thought, well, you know, this is a good way to, to help her out and get her on her feet. Because she had just graduated from, uh, 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 got her master's degree in literature. So I thought, how you doing? This way, it? Yeah, oh, yep, okay. you're going the right way. Yeah, I got lost. No problem. So, uh, yeah, so I thought, well, you know, this would be a good way to help her out. You know, pay again. I'd, and I get something out of it, and she gets something out of it. Well, she strung me along. I'm working on it. I got this and that and the other, and I'm having trouble transferring this file to you, and I can't do this, and I don't understand this. And this just went on. I let it go on way too long. So finally, then I got a new editor, and uh, that editor, once I, you know, when you got a good editor, let me just explain. You give them something, a week later or two weeks later, it comes back, edited okay now and, and you pay them and they'll charge you if they do it right by the hour you know usually $25 an hour is kind of the going rate but my editor was only charging me 15 and she was fantastic oh my god I, I compared her I did go out and get a second editor and uh, paid her 25 and I guarantee you I got more out of the $15 an hour now she's of course she I was a springboard for her to get started in her business and uh, she ain't fifteen dollars an hour no more. I, I bet you're going to pay thirty or forty dollars an hour for that editing time. So that can get really expensive. And so what you got to do is, as you're writing, you're just constantly sending your editor stuff, and then stuff comes back from your editor, and you you edit it into the book. And then, of course, things are changing in the book. And then you know, you, so that's kind of you know, the, so. There's a huge expense. You know, don't make so. So then I hired a guy to uh, you know you want you're going to want a, a videos. Okay. That's what this is all about. We're making videos, and uh, so because you, if you're not visual at this day and age, uh, you're you're dead. You're absolutely dead. Now, I, I was going to pay a guy to make videos, and it, it turns out the guy had all. He, he was a dinosaur, man. He had all the old technology, and I didn't know anything. I didn't know nothing about making videos, and so I gave him a ton of money, and then I also paid him to put up a website for me. And the son of a gun, you know, he was kind of a friend, and really an acquaintance, more a tennis guy. And uh, he, he built a website for me, but he used an old Yahoo site builder tool that was a piece of crap and had been around for years and nobody used it anymore. And it had all these strings attached. And then what he did was he registered my, my uh, domain in his name. Uh, I had tossed me a ton of money to yank that all out from underneath him. Um, I mean, he wasn't totally shady about the whole thing, but, you know, it, it wasn't... Uh, I didn't know what was going on. And so that's another big thing about small business you got to do it all yourself or you got to make sure you got the proper legal paperwork so what i should have done was said that anything that he did for me working on the website or, or video wise i own you know you got to get them to sign over the rights you can find those forms on the internet go to legal zoom and uh, make sure they sign all that stuff over to you because you think you know you're paying somebody to do it for you therefore you own it right no you do not and in fact a great story on websites because uh, and that's another thing is trying to learn all this stuff go go out and try to get with a, a lawyer firm okay and you talk to them about you know what what are the legal things that I need to be thinking about putting up a website so uh, I'm a veteran and we do get some free advice from time to time and there was this one company out of California and uh, they offered uh, an hour of uh, consultation believe me an hour consultation that's worth about $500 and uh, 
so I talked to them guys, you know, about some of the things I'd run into, and I had a bunch of questions. You know, that's another thing. List out your doggone questions. If you get get something like that where they're going to offer you free, uh, and I waited. I mean, I took me a good four or five hours to get that $500 consultation, but it was worth it. And they told me a horror story. I mean, even lawyers can mess up. They had built a website, and uh, the woman, you know, she had custom coded a lot of stuff in there. You know, behind the scenes, you can write like Python and uh, these uh, these custom languages, and because uh, they wanted some customizations done and whatnot. And uh, so, but it turns out she had legal rights to all of that. And so when they uh, went to you know, take over the website, because that's what they wanted to do eventually, was they wanted to take it away from her. She said, well, that's going to cost you $100,000. And they just, their eyes bugged out of their head. They said, well, why? We paid you to do the website. Well, it turns out, when that's once they investigate, this is a law firm now. I, it, she owns the website because she did it. And all that customization, she did. So they actually had to start from scratch, building a website of their own and made sure they did all the legal uh, paperwork correctly. Now they didn't give me advice on what that legal paperwork is. You'll just have to do your own research. Just understand it. So what I do is I did my, I said, well, I got to make my own website. So what, what did I do? I got out with WordPress. Woohoo, WordPress. So I get a WordPress website up. It was pretty good. Uh, it had, it was adequate. Um, I and I was going to add to it. You know, I wanted to get some product on that website because what I was going to do is sell the chapters of my book uh, individually as PDF files. Uh, which eventually I did try to do, once again, no interest. Um, but, uh, so, what WordPress, boom, I did not know. Uh, a buddy of mine who's in corporate cybersecurity, he said, no, man, WordPress is hackable. I mean, it's, it's, there's a history of, of, of hacks getting in. On, so, you know, and that's another thing. You've got everybody in the universe out there that wants to make a buck off of your business. Even, even, if, even if you're not making money, they think they're going to make money off of you. And so they hacked my website. Uh, you know, I believe me, I'm pretty good with computers and whatnot. I just use the, the regular tools. I didn't do anything extraordinary, but WordPress is so riddled. They got up there, they put a bunch of garbage on my website, and it was hacked. And eventually, the actually, the internet service provider, <laughs> they, they took down my website because what they had done is they made it into a bot, and it was spewing malware all over the internet. And, uh, you know, I don't blame them. I mean, I would have taken the website down too, you know. What am I going to do, object to that? And uh, so I was screwed at that point. So then I went out and I did research tools. And, you know, if you go to GoDaddy or one of these other hosting sites, you know, they got all their own proprietary uh, stuff for helping you build a website. It's probably pretty good. But I, I tell you, what I found was Joomla. And uh, you may or may not have heard of that, but that's the, that is the search engine in Linux. Um, and, well, and here's, here's just another little thing for you. I told you I was a Unix administrator. Uh, you know, when I, when I, before I even started to launch the small business, I was looking for a job. Now, when you're 50 years old and uh, you're a cancer survivor and you haven't worked for a year, uh, there ain't nobody on earth that wants you. You know, that's, that's kind of that uh, age discrimination thing. You know, they want young guys in there that, uh, that know stuff. So, you know, and you're working through uh, rehabilitation services, Michigan Rehabilitation Services. They're supposed to be helping you find a job or uh, whatever they call their job, Connect. So we're just going to get off of the uh, the trail here and just get onto the paved trail because I'm just uh, talking and uh, and so they'll they'll give you a little bit of money. So they did they did let me get a Linux uh, certification, but all I got was the very basic cert. Which by by the way that was tough. You know when you're 40, 48, 50 years old, you know you are kind of set in your ways. And uh, Linux is a lot different than than Unix. And uh, to get that certification, I actually had to take a college class. Uh, which I aced, of course, and uh, and then I finally went and got the certification, and I did get two interviews, and I went in with them guys, and they they were like, you only got the, the basic uh, level. I said, well, yeah, I'm just looking for a basic level job. Well, you're 50 years old. We're not going to hire you for that. We can get young kids out of college, you know, with a basic certification. Now, you come back to us once you get the next level certification. Well, it's kind of like Cisco if you're out there in the computer world. You know, that, that basic certification, I'm not going to say it's easy, but it, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's reachable. But when you go to the next level of certification, now, you know, it took me six months to get the first certification. Now it's going to take me probably, you know, eight months to get the second certification. And in the meantime, I got bills to pay, you know, so I screwed there, too. And that was just me looking for a job, just telling you how it all works. Um, 
So, all right, getting back to the small business, the pitfalls, we talked about the editor, we talked about the website, you know. So then, uh, you know, the, the other one was get on social media. You know, back then, that was 2000, well, 2012, 13. 13 was when I was going to publish the book. I'll give you that story in a second. And uh, um, so, uh, where, geez, I'm losing my, my train of thought here. Um, but yeah, so 2013, here I, you know, here I am trying to launch it. I tried to get on social media. Now I try to get somebody. At that time, I, try, I kept trying to hire kids because I figured everybody says, "Oh, my son knows how to handle Facebook." So then I would go to the parent, you know, and I would say, "Look, I'm going to pay them uh, uh, money to help me, you know, put up a good Facebook account." I said, "It's got to look business-like. I need all of the, you know, the graphics done because at that time I did not really know." how to reshape graphics, you know, that's another thing you got to learn how to do is take, and that's another, use your own pictures, okay, um, but, uh, so, and, and not one of them, not one kid ever took me up, you know, you'd think they want to earn $15 an hour to help somebody set up a Facebook account, so what, what I really came to the conclusion of is, yeah, they might be up there, you know, chatting with their friends and doing all of that stuff, but they don't know squat about setting up a professional Facebook account for marketing a business, you know. So then, you know, I got on Twitter and uh, you can tweet to your blue in the face, but you know, if somebody doesn't pick you up or you're not a name out there, eh, nobody cares. So then I started a blog and, you know, I got the blog going. I put a lot of good stuff up on the blog. Once again, no, no traffic there. So, you know, you get back to the videos and that's what this is all about. That's why I'm making videos now. Um, yeah, have I given up on the business? No. I want to bust that book up into three books and then bring it up to date. It uh, was published in 2016, so it's four years old. Everybody says, well, if the, if, the, if the stuff you wrote about about computers and cybersecurity is four years old, it's completely out of date. No, 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 it's not. Absolutely not. In fact, there's stuff in there, like uh, the SSH uh, chapter talks about setting up an SSH server, being able to tunnel in through firewalls to, uh, to get out on the internet and use your own encryption rather than paying for a VPN service. Plus, you're going to want that SSH server so that you can transfer files securely between you and other small businesses or corporations. I know I did all that for, for the corporation that I work for because I handled all of the encryption technology. So I already had a good basis in that. But once again, there was nobody out there who had written about how to do all this. So I had to learn how to do it on my own. And I wrote about it in the book. And I thought, well, hell, just this one chapter alone is going to sell, sell the book. And uh, yeah, no, it didn't. <laughs> but, so, but all that stuff is still relevant is what I'm saying. Nothing's changed about SSH technology. Now, they're, they're, they're improving it. You know, the, uh, the open SSH, they, they, they're constantly coming out with new versions and making it more secure and uh, doing some things behind the scenes. So I'm going to turn around and start heading back to the car. Whew. Good ex good day of exercise. Great day of exercise. So uh, <clears throat> getting back to that. So without the videos, uh, you really can't do anything. Paying somebody to do them, uh, that's not going to work for you. Paying somebody to do your website, that's not going to work for you. So you kind of get into now you, to be a small business, you got to be a website expert. You got to be a blogging expert. You got to be a video expert. And that's where you know, so just doing videos now. Look at all the work I've done here. You know, I've played with uh, Corel uh, Video. I think it's called Video Studio. I was using that until the licensing got crazy. They wanted to license it per computer. And I think I talked about that in previous videos. So now I'm using DaVinci. And DaVinci gives me free uh, editing tool. But it's a huge, huge learning curve. And, I, you know, I want to take a college class on this stuff. And uh, I'm sure there's some courses out there, but there's only so gosh dang much time. You know, just to do one of these stupid videos, it takes me eight, eight hours to upload it. Now, I guess my upload speeds must suck. But uh, anyway, I think that's long enough for today. I've talked, uh, who knows how long this video is going to be. And uh, hey, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And Merry Christmas. And uh, we'll, we'll continue with the small business story and giving you some advice, maybe in a later video. Um, but we, we're still working on hiking the entire Florida Trail. You just got to see the first section that we're going to start at. You know, I'll probably start uh, further up. Because uh, this really, it, it doesn't change much. If you kind of look, this is kind of what you see all the way up. There's a couple roads up here. And, uh, you know, I'll take a couple clips in there. Um, but this is part of the Greenway. And uh, it just kind of winds on for many, many miles. Um, I, I do want to get, uh, there, there are some unique places. I, I'll get those on those videos, um, and uh, that's, that's about it. All right.